New York's Supreme Court building in Manhattan has been the center of America's legal universe this month, with much attention focused on the trials of Donald Trump. The former president doesn't think much of the corporate fraud charges brought against him by New York's attorney general. He's a political hack, the attorney general. That attorney general, Letitia James, is also taking aim at a conservative political institution in America, the National Rifle Association, and its former chief, Wayne LaPierre. This bundle of misdeeds really isn't about ideology or politics. It's about old-fashioned graft. The NRA and four former key executives are accused of misusing members' funds on a massive scale. So the numbers are quite large. We're talking about multiple millions of dollars in all. Uh, the allegation is uh, more than $10 million in improper uh, private jet travel, for example. It's also alleged that the improper contracts, so that, the, for example, that Mr. LaPierre was negotiating contracts to the tune of more than $100 million with vendors whom he was accepting improper gifts, such as trips on super yachts, trips to the Mediterranean, things like that. The NRA was founded as a charity in New York State, which launched this suit more than three years ago. 74-year-old Wayne LaPierre, once one of the most feared political operators in Washington, resigned after leading the organization for more than 30 years just before the trial began earlier this month. So it was a surprise when just days before the trial, he resigned. Now, I don't know what the legal strategy was going to be before that, but since the trial has opened, it's become very clear that the NRA's way of defending against this lawsuit is saying, we are not Wayne LaPierre. It's far from clear that strategy will work. The individuals face paying millions in damages, and a monitor could be appointed to run the NRA. It has brought the NRA to the brink of financial disaster. Professor Robert Spitzer has written six books on the politics of gun control in the U.S. It's really been a crisis, or if you will, come to Jesus moment for those among the NRA who are trying to rescue the NRA and save it from complete, uh, completely being dismantled. Just eight years ago, the NRA was at the peak of its political power. For one thing, they endorsed Donald Trump for president before most other traditional conservative groups came on board with Trump. And of course, Trump wound up winning that election. They spent over $31 million just on Donald Trump's campaign. The NRA spent over $70 million to aid Republicans around the country. It was a lot of spending for them. And they hit the jackpot because Trump wins and Republicans take control of Congress. But soon, the NRA's position had changed drastically. School shootings in the U.S. had for years been ratcheting up public pressure, but the NRA refused to waver from its preferred solution, putting more guns in schools. If it's crazy to call for putting police and armed security in our school to protect our children, then call me crazy. That intransigence bothered some lifelong gun owners, such as Ross Baker. My dad thought that uh, any red-blooded American boy ought to know how to use firearms. Baker joined the NRA in the 1990s, but he quit as the organization's influence in the gun control debate grew. I think that their knee-jerk reaction to every firearm outrage in the United States is to throw up the barricades uh, and say, you know, there should be no restrictions, you know, that the Second Amendment is absolutely clear. Uh, and the Supreme Court has basically taken their position. Baker says the lawsuit in New York against the NRA and Wayne LaPierre couldn't have come soon enough. Listen to me now. He was able, because of the, the nature of the National Rifle Association and its, and its connection with its members, um, to be able to use those dues that the members pay to lead an incredibly lavish lifestyle. Thank you very much. Now, this may have contributed to the decline of membership, uh, that people simply didn't want to um, subsidize Wayne LaPierre's 
uh, lavish lifestyle. The organization has lost more than a million members from its peak of six million in 2018. But Robert Spitzer doesn't believe this trial will be the end of the NRA. I think the NRA can recover and probably will, but not in the form in which it has existed in past years and decades. Oh. It may not emerge as the powerhouse it once was, but he says gun owners in the U.S. will always be a political force that can't be ignored. There are still millions of Americans out in the country who still believe in the gun rights cause. I mean, they're still true believers. They're still worried about the government coming and taking away all their guns. They're worried about possible new gun laws. And they're still out there. And th that, of course, has really been the key to the NRA's strength over the decades.